Hello, guys and gals. Me, Mudahara. I'm going to say something really uh -oh. filthy for the audience watching. Artificial intelligence, okay? Generative artificial intelligence. Generative image, you know, generation. All of that. All of the buzzwords mm -hmm. you've seen on the internet, Reddit, we love that. Twitter. You know, your grandma's bridge game. You get it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I talk about AI art, it can either be one of the things that people love talking about. What are about. these they things over here? Those are video games? How could a video game be in a box? Because, like, you just download it from the website. How does he put a video game in a box? What is this? Like, uh, how can you how can you do that? I love the idea of generating, you know, Peter Griffin and Pikachu, you know, taking over the oh, world Oh, thank together. God. Just or what I wanted. There's a group of people that just hate the idea of artificial or intelligence Swift. taking over some of the most creative fields in the world. Now, Drink. ladies and gentlemen, this is Asmongold, who is uh -oh. one of the largest streamers imaginable. And he said something that made a lot of people a little angry, okay? Well, to be fair, the steak made people angry, too. It really was a situation that pissed off a lot of people in the artistic space. Now, I want to go... What he means by that is furries. ...over this, because this whole situation... A lot of furries. Our world, which, my God, that game is like... It's, it's a great game. But holy shit, the controversies surrounding it are insane to discuss. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's just recap with Power World. It's an independent game that came out, Pokemon with guns, and it's got three big allegations that are going against it. One of them is plagiarism. Did they basically plagiarize the designs from Nintendo? Yeah. Uh, or, you know, even yep. the fan community? Some would say, yeah. Yeah, I'd say, say, yeah, say so, yeah, inspired. probably. Yeah. We can't say yes or no until they're taken to court. The other big allegation from them is artificial intelligence. <laughs> Did they use AI art to help design the assets for the game? Now, I'm going to Well, according to somebody who admitted they lied, the answer to that is yes. ...to this point, because this is where Asmund Gold's take came from. Uh -oh. so we're going to listen to what he says, and then I want to talk about it, because I really don't agree 100% mm -hmm. with what he said. Okay. But I can't just sit here and say that he is entirely wrong. So let's listen to this. Remember what I said the first day this shit happened, all this dust got kicked up? Everybody is going to be talking about how wrong I am on the first day, and a few days later they're going to be talking about all the ways that I was actually right? You remember that? Ooh quickly ready to expect me to draw a moral line yep i have to perceive a difference that i consider substantial and i do not consider the difference substantial do you guys no right no and that's really what matters true if it was made with ai i'm completely okay with that because it was fun the evidence it is doesn't that matter. Nobody really cares the lead about this. developer has been very positive about ai in the past yeah and made an AI game We're gonna play called this, by AI the way. Art Imposter that lets yeah. an AI artist draw a picture. I still so need that, to. That was like, like one I've of the been games. so busy, bro. Like, I need to play that game. Like, I really need to. Games We're going to be playing and, this this week. Yes, just generally has been much more uh, positive about some of the benefits of AI rather than what is the normal sentiment amongst artists and, and you know, I guess general mm -hmm. uh, Twitter population, which is that, you know, AI is bad and it takes jobs from well, people. Well, AI and the sentiment from artists... Artist opinions don't matter. It just doesn't matter. Because what matters is the opinion of the people that are buying the product. Imagine like, that. It doesn't, like, your opinion on it, like, just because you do it doesn't, like, nobody cares. Yeah. Like, it, 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 it's not, yeah. it's not relevant. It's like whenever one of these, like, you know, really well-respected and, and really respectable uh, directors talks about how bad Marvel is. Shut up, old man. Shut up. I like watching the Thor movie. It was cool. All right. I think one of the biggest sins is telling me about Avengers or Marvel or anything. Look, uh, I... Uh, nah, nah. Uh, uh, can't, I can't understand the Marvel, like, soy jacking. You know, when people go... Dude. Infinity War and Thor Ragnarok are, I think, S-tier movies. Look. It's not been her. It's not the original Matrix. It's not the Lord of the Rings trilogy. But I think these movies were fucking cool. They were fun to watch. And I really liked them. And at the end of the day, what else matters? I like the movies. 
What? A bit... Infinity War? Anyways, you know, this isn't a Marvel, uh-huh. uh, you know, shit hour. The point is, he said a few things that obviously are a little bit inflammatory. One of them was, artists' opinions do not matter. Now, this is where <laughs> I completely disagree. I think when you're designing video games, movies, music, Mm -hmm. making videos on YouTube, the opinion of the artist does ultimately matter when it comes to the tools being used to create the art, right? Because here's the thing, the Mm -hmm. entire context of the situation is centered around artificial intelligence and the allegation that Pal World used it. Now, I made a video where I talked about the controversy of Pal World, and there is no definitive evidence that the game... Well, I I think really, I mean, obviously an artist's opinion matters. I was talking about, like, if you're selling something, your opinion of, of, like, your perception of value, the customer is not entitled, or sorry, you are not entitled to have the customer share your perception of value. Like, of course, an artist's opinion matters. Like, duh, everybody's opinion matters. And it doesn't matter in different circumstances. Like, an artist's opinion matters whenever they're making art. Does an artist's opinion matter whenever they're doing surgery? It, it, you know, with, with like, a doctor? No. Because they're not a fucking doctor. The same as a doctor's opinion probably doesn't matter a whole lot with art. That's just how it is. But if you go to market with something, the truth is that your opinion on it really doesn't matter. Because you're giving that thing away. You are now saying that now I want your opinion on it, and I want your opinion to be somewhat similar to mine, and I want you to give me money for it. That's the way it works. Ever actually use artificial intelligence. The only yes. evidence that exists out there, circumstantially, mm-hmm. is the actual CEO of the company, Pocket Pair, talking very positively about artificial intelligence, yeah. about you know the future of it, and spending God knows how many hours with it. That is an indicative of their game using AI. In fact, if anything, from my understanding, when you use artificial intelligence in a video game Mm -hmm. and you publish that to Steam, then you have to denote it. Otherwise, I believe Valve can take actual legal action against a company. Of course they can. You're lying in a contract. Like, and this isn't like a, oh, you signed the EULA for Club Penguin and you said poop. And now your nine-year-old is going to Alcatraz. Probably not, right? But, like, at the same time, if you are a big company and you actively lie to something like this, Steam would have to sue them. Because if they don't, then they just open the floodgates for everybody else to do it, too. They would have to sue them. Anyways, beyond all of that, artificial intelligence wasn't proven. No, I'll try. Guantanamo Bay. Was Sorry. saying is, as a consumer, okay, You're terrorizing as consumes, Club Penguin right, members underneath the system that we live in, uh, it doesn't matter because if the game is good yes, true. and people enjoy it, then most people do not care about the ethicalities exactly. of the game during its production. True. So true. most people who are playing this game probably don't give a flying fuck about artificial well, intelligence. Well, they don't know about it is exactly what Asmund Gold has said. That's right. Now, on a very, very, like, realistic level, he's not wrong. Artif- I've been hearing this a lot lately. I've been hearing this a whole lot. Artificial intelligence for the general average population, they don't even know, nor do they care. Uh-huh. See, here's the thing about video game development. Uh, you will never get the savings passed on to you. If Rockstar Games, if EA, if Ubisoft, if any big AAA developer could find a way to get rid of half of its workforce and replace them with artificial intelligence of the generative variety, it's gonna happen. they would immediately start removing everyone. Yes. The games would still be nearly $100 on release, and these companies would just maximize their profits even yeah, they, Yeah, it's not like, oh, I can't wait for them to start using AI because then video games are going to be $50 again. No, it's not going to happen. Further. Now, the thing about artificial intelligence, right, is I think it actually does have positivity if artists are using it to assist their creations. Imagine creating an open world like Grand Theft Auto 7, right, when that's coming out. GTA 6, it's been in development for too long to the point where yeah. I don't think they have anything generative inside it. But to expect that GTA 7 won't have any AI-generated components would be outlandish. 
Imagine creating a world where instead of having 10 or 15 lines being repeated by, you know, citizens in the world, There's 50. you could generate two to 300 lines yeah. of flavor voice dialogue across a city. And look, at the end of the day, even if you have a video game where flavor features, flavor text, you know, text that occasionally pops up like two, three minutes out of a 70 hour play session, again, just to add variety in a general sense is something that I think most publishers are going to be doing most developers are going to be toying around with yeah it's like filling in the cracks adding in little bits of bullshit right like little little like you know oh well we, we need something here let's just have the ai do it and that way we don't have to like invest time into it that way, I don't think that artificial intelligence is necessarily taking away jobs. I don't think there's any writer in the world that is looking forward to generating like hundreds, if not I don't think the writers are looking forward to it, but the writers have a job to do it. And if they have a robot doing it, what the writer is really looking forward to is their paycheck. Because I think the real problem here is the fact that people aren't mad that AI is replacing them, people are mad that they're not getting paid money. That's where the root of this comes from. It actually doesn't have anything as much. Actually, I think that that's not true. I think that people, obviously, some people care. But I think that the, the vast majority care because they need the money. It's what it implies. It's not that they're getting replaced by AI. That's not fundamentally the problem. The fundamental problem is they need a job, and they need a job to make money. Thousands of flavor text lines. If they could focus mm -hmm. their efforts on things that most players like, are going I, to I think that, like for example, if let's say every person who got their job replaced by AI was told by whatever company replaced them that from now on you're going to be paid your salary every month of the of of the rest of your life and you don't have to come into work anymore i bet people would look at those guys like they won the lottery i i do because then they would have time to make their own projects do their own thing etc so i i think that i actually because like if you think about it absolutely that's the case see and let the ai kind of handle the other you know yeah. chunk of a game that you know players are going to see here and there in a very tiny way mm -hmm. it's kind of like photoshop too photoshop has a lot of ai tools now and so for a lot does, of actual of artists having an artificial wow. intelligence tool that you can just go, that? hey get rid of the background add some yep. sky do some of the grunt work for me that would be great as somebody that makes YouTube content, I would love if when I'm doing these 30... Somebody says that won't happen. It's like it's not like digging ditches. What I'm saying is that even in creative work, you have to do things that are sludge work. Like anybody who's edited videos knows this. Where it's like 10% of editing videos is fun. 90% is... Sit there... Like, that, that's what it always fucking is. And so, yeah, of course, people would still want to work. Just be, and, and this is the thing, right? Is that anybody who's been a neat for a long period of time knows this. You will find things to do if you don't have a job. Like, you don't need a job to pursue a purpose in life. You can even pursue a purpose in life that could be another job. Like, same as, like, you know, for example, like, people do, like, the, uh, the, the trucking simulators. Like, you're basically doing a job. But they love doing it. So people are free to pursue what they're passionate about. And that's, and again, I'm not saying that, like, that it's going to happen with, like, the getting paid every month for the rest of your life. It's a thought exercise about how society and those people would react to it as a method of explaining my point of view. I understand it's probably not going to happen. Hour-long videos, if I needed to do things like voiceovers, I would love to type yeah. a quick line and have a computer generate a voiceover and just slap that into my timeline Easy. so I can save some time and over, you know, the course of an edit, save myself several hours. But these are mm -hmm. things that I feel could be used to assist developers. 
The thing about artificial intelligence when designing entire assets is, yes, in a way it can take away the entire, uh, it, can, it can take away jobs from actual artists. It will. Right? And not it can, it will. my real thing about it too. It's not even just the job aspect. It's the fact that these artificial intelligences are used, uh, the way that they work is they're trained off of data that belongs to artists themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that people are going to say, what about human beings that get inspired looking at somebody's art? Sure. I think there's a bit of a difference. A, there's a sentient difference. Human beings interpret what they see differently between each other. And when it comes to these, you know, AI generators, these, you know, GANs, these, uh, these uh, adversarial networks, I feel like a lot of them are literally designed to just one by one copy. Even if I saw the Mona Lisa today, I don't have the skills to replicate that by hand. Artificial you do if you have a camera. Just take a picture of it. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. Intelligence can literally do the copy paste job. The entire skill mm -hmm. aspect is completely taken out. And when yeah. artificial intelligence is trained off of one artist's style. I think that, that why is it important that skill is involved? I, I find this to be gatekeeping. I think that skill is such a subjective judgment that like, how can you determine like what is skill? What is not skill? How do you determine somebody's artistic skill? I, I, I think this is like super, super gatekeeping. That artist could be put out of a job if their style is replicated so well that instead of people going yeah. to commission them, they just go to the artificial intelligence and right. build what they want using that person's unique style. Again, I know that there's going to be a lot of debate around this, mm -hmm. but I understand that artificial intelligence is already here. Look, at the end of the day, the AI genie in a bottle has already escaped. It is. Gaming companies are going to use them. Movie studios are going to He's use right. them. Writers are going to be using them. And we're at a point where people who argue about this stuff often don't stand up for each other. You know, you got voice actors who are threatened to be replaced by artificial intelligence. I don't see They will be. It's what's going to happen. They already did it with James Earl Jones and Darth Vader. And he's totally good with it. Like, it's not like they did this against his consent. Like, he signed off on this. He's good with this. See anybody really standing up for them to the same capacity as somebody who works in the writer's room, right? For yeah. Like a television show or a movie. And same with artists. Mm -hmm. There's so much fragmentation in this fight that ultimately AI is going to win, right? And artificial intelligence is technology, and you can't just stop technology. Look at You've the end of the day. You've never been able to. There's, as I said, there's never been a single time in human history that preventing technology from growing and expanding is seen historically as a positive thing. The tools to use this artificial intelligence is laying on thousands of GitHub repositories that takes anybody minutes to source, download, get running, and basically mm -hmm. use right locally on their system. You are never is this the black or Chinese ready. thing? You have to learn that AI exists, and maybe we need laws that are yeah. designed to help make sure that it properly allows us to credit artists whose information has been trained off of and then basically if we can find a way to compensate them for their involvement in ai generated processes ai generated products the way that AI i don't think that that's ever going to happen and i don't think there's a way that you can do that that ethically makes sense like for example every single person's style is probably very close to somebody else's style and also like there are artists that have different styles themselves so, like, if you have an amalgamation of, like, 70,000 different styles, or let's say there's 50 of them, how do you discern which percentage of the style that you're using? How is it that person's style? Like, for example, if you know the League of Legends style, is that not very derivative of Dota? For example, like, think about how many games have a style that's derivative of Fortnite. So if you use the style of a derivative from Fortnite game, does Fortnite get the, uh, what do you call it? The, does Fortnite get the money or does the game get the money? You see what I'm saying?
it's just like whenever you try to break this down and actually try to think about how royalties for this would really work, it becomes so granular that it's impossible to ever like try to pull anything out of it and make it make sense at all. And six clusterfucks clusterfucking together. Exactly. Yeah, it's completely impossible. Yeah, there's no way you can do that. Art generators learn is through machine learning. It basically is a training algorithm that takes in an enormous set of data and analyzes its relationship between different aspects. An AI art generator is trained on images and on the text that describes those images. Mm -hmm. The training... Yeah, of course. Let me read this. Uh, absolutely not impossible if you let people opt out in their own data sets and get paid to train. Well, what happens when... So this is really what the problem is. What happens whenever a video game is made overseas without these restrictions, and then somebody makes an art style that's derivative of that video game? Do you understand how this becomes a problem? Like, this is unsolvable. And, and it's unsolvable because of the collaborative nature of art. You cannot ever unravel anything. It's like, I think Socrates even said, there is no original text. You can't go back and figure out the guy that invented a certain style. Because a style evolves over a hundred years of art. Like Tolkien Universe. Yeah, think about how many times. Like, I think Tolkien Universe is actually a great example because it's a little bit different. Because, like, with Tolkien Universe, a lot of people use the tropes that Tolkien created. Like, goblins are like this, dwarves are like this, orcs are like this, elves are like this. And, like, he created those, and these are used to this day. Does everybody owe him a royalty or a derivative because he created the foundation that people build, uh, build fantasy off of? Well, clearly they don't, because people aren't paying him money. That's not the way it works. I think Muda means paying royalties per image used that's how research papers use citation system yes but what i'm saying is that whenever you are taking it and you are creating an amalgamation of like 400 million images how do you do a royalty for 400 million images used as a sample how can you possibly do that data comes from scraping the web finding available images that have mm -hmm. text associated with them. In some cases, annotations are added afterwards. That means the creators of the images or people depicted in them likely do not know or specifically consent to being included in the analysis. All that happens is AI tools, and this isn't just generators for images, it can literally be things like ChatGPT. In fact, even according to the Electronic Frontier Foundation, who, by the way, supports the and right... And couldn't you also just have somebody... To get around something like this, couldn't you just have somebody create sample art that's nearly derivative of somebody else's work? Like how Pokemon's derivative of Digimon, and then just copy it off of that? Like, I... I technically, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think this is a solution. It, it's impossible to do this. Like, basically, this is, a, this is one of those things that the moment that you make a rule against it, everybody will immediately go around that rule in a second. Because they'll figure out 50 different workarounds instantaneously. To scrape website has taught people about the no robots.txt mm -hmm. situation, where in order to prevent these large language models like OpenAI, Google Bard, yeah. from jumping onto your website and just scraping data, costing you bandwidth, costing you actual money, they can find a way to basically restrict as many sites from accessing you. It's one of the reasons why, in a lot of cases, uh, you've got services like Reddit that have added things like pricing out their API. So, yeah. for instance, if you use Reddit, the API is more paid. Same thing with Twitter, because there's so much scraping on their services that in order to, you know, financially operate, yeah. they have to limit API access just so that, you know, these big AI services can't just scrape all the data they need and then use it to build their chatbots, their big mm -hmm. chat GPT systems. I feel like at the end of the day, when it comes to artificial intelligence, what Asmongold said in his like piece, which people, you know, hated, a lot of people really did not like what he said, actually holds weight. Look, at the end of the 
It's always how it is, isn't it? The day the consumer is going to pick a good game. If the good game was built- here's a great example, right? Is Genshin Impact? I've said this before. Genshin Impact <laughs> is so derivative of Breath of the Wild, but people played it, and now it's a massively popular game because the audience decided that. Using artificial intelligence, on there's no, there's no and you AI. You really care with about that. ethics to the point where you feel just bad a lot of control this, C, control V. Then you're going to have to give up a lot of things that you consume, things like your cell phones, for instance, yeah. which, or any, or your computer equipment in general, which has been resourced and farmed using slave labor around the world unethically. A lot of these things that we use are sourced unethically, and these yeah. video games, with how great AI tools are becoming, how quickly the progress is going. I think games are going to start using them a lot more and more. I just think going forward, it's not that you can stop progress. I think you should have empathy for the people building these creative products. Look, I care about people's jobs and I care about artists. I care about people in this industry. And I understand that while this stuff can be used. I, I don't really care about that per se. I care about what I think the core issue is. And the core issue is the fact that people need a job to live. And I think that needs to change. I think that's the core problem. And keeping jobs that have been outdated by AI on life support through legislation won't solve it. Because they'll just find another way to fire you. Or they'll wait for you to die and then just not hire somebody new. It's just not going to happen. Like, there, there is no solution other than that. Because this will happen in so many different ways. This is only the beginning. For assistive purposes like hey if you're an artist and you want to use ai to help you come up with a mm -hmm. new idea or maybe to help you do the grunt work for a lot of your pieces yeah sure but we demonize human beings for copying just like artificial intelligence copies too artists that yeah, trace get rightfully shit on in the public just like not really though because think about the dragon quest pokemon like that comparison think about genshin and breath of the wild Think about Pow World and Pokemon. They don't really get shit on unless the product is bad. Nobody actually cares about these problems other than other people that are personally invested in them and a handful of other people that like just as a... It's not tracing. Tracing is different. Oh, so, so you're talking about just exclusively only tracing specifically. I thought he's taught like it like I see that he's he used tracing as an example. Sure. Yeah, but like for a lot of the other stuff, I think that as long as it's derivative, people don't give a shit. Tracing the art process. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people get shit on for that. He's right about that. But the reason why I think that he's right is because a lot of the tracing, the things that are being traced are generally not really being sold like mass, produ mass production. It's not being sold to like a wide consumer audience in a way that the consumer isn't going to see the, ac the accusations of tracing. It's very small scale whenever you compare it to like mass distribution of a game. AI art that is used with training models that are trained off of an actual artist style can be used to basically mm -hmm. cut them out of an industry or the market. And it's to no fault of their own. Look, at the end of the day, you can't put the genie in the bottle. It's already up. Pandora's box is open. But we should focus on trying to attribute the artists who have been used unwillingly in this situation, apply proper credit, and if maybe somewhere down... I think that is impossible. It, it is not even like, as soon as you... See, it, it's a great idea, and it would be nice if we could do that. But it is impossible to do that. I genuinely believe that. I think it is, is absolutely impossible. And I think that if you make a rule on the way that you have to credit them, the first thing people will do is to just create workarounds. And as soon as the workarounds are created, you can't like retroactively like make extra stuff against the law. So as soon as these networkers these networks are created, even if they're built on the foundation, like for example, like everything that we live and we have in like our culture is built on the foundation of slavery. Like the roads, the the like general, like the cities, like not the actual buildings themselves, but like originally it was built by slavery. 
But we can't go and blow everything up again just because of that. It's just accepted. No. Not this whole country. A lot of it was built by slavery. Not every single brick by every single person was put there by a slave, but a lot of it was. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't built by just slavery. I didn't say it was. I'm saying that slavery was a big component to it. And what my point is, again, with that is that you can't just go back and undo that. So after these neural networks are created by using everybody's work in some massive amalgamation, then it's done. The work is done. Like, I'm not saying that, like, we have to, like, I'm not arguing for reparations, guys. I'm not trying to say that, you know, oh, my God, it's like this is a, a like a white guilt thing. Like, I'm not, I never said any of this. Like, I, what do you, like, I know that people are like, uh, what, what's the word for it? Like, uh, conditioned to, like, hear that, oh, it, it's made by slavery. So, oh, my God, I have to, I have to contest this. I have to contest this. Like, no, I don't, get, that's not my point. My point is simply that you can't just go back and remove that specific part of the process of how we got to where we are. You can't do that. You can't go back in time and do that in the same way you can't do that with the neural networks either. Like they're being built with all of these uh, these pictures and everything and everything put into them. And it's just being put together on top of each other, on top of each other over and over and over. And guess what? You eventually have something to where like the actual source, you don't even know what it was anymore. Does that make sense? Do you think most infrastructure in this country was built over 1865? No, of course not. Of course, I don't think that the fucking skyscraper that is in, like, downtown Austin was built by slaves. I watched it get built 20 years ago. That's not what I said. You're, you're completely misunderstanding. Do you really think that's what I think? Do you really think that that's what I'm trying to say? What is this? On the road, we can make sure people get some money in their pocket because of their, you know, AI, because of their art styles being used unwillingly, yeah. that's all great. But we're at a situation where, yes, I'm not going to deny, Asmongold is 100% right that consumers don't care. But the way that these artificial intelligences work, the mm -hmm. legality around them is still questionable at best. And with all the lawsuits flying around between... It doesn't matter. The legality doesn't matter. Straight up. Nobody cares. It's a global market. The, the companies that don't do it will lose to the companies that do. And the, the, the consumers will just buy the ones that are bad. Or that are made unethically. That's just what's going to happen. That's the reason why all the manufacturing things that you buy are made in fucking like Malaysia and China and Taiwan. It's because they beat out all the people here because they can't compete. Many sites like Getty, for instance, I think this whole debate is far from over. But oh, ladies and gentlemen, right about let me that. know what you think in the comment section below. AI is not going anywhere, but we got to find a way to regulate it the right mm -hmm. way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. And if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out. Yep. Why we have direct copyrights and AI have not protected? We have direct copyrights. And despite those direct copyrights, people create things that are almost one-to-one -one carbon copies without getting shut down all the time. So what makes you think that AI is going to be that much different? We just got done watching something about 15 different Street Fighter knockoffs that are basically the exact same thing. You really think that's that much different than an AI just creating something? I don't think so. Yeah, copyright only applies to creative work by humans. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about that. But, like, anyway, I will link you guys the video. It's a 15-minute video. If you give it stretched into a 40... Oh, God. It's not outside the art community, but it took you a talking point perspective of why artists are so against AI. Yeah, I think artists are against AI because artists need money to live. I don't think that artists would have the same perspective on AI if AI wasn't removing their jobs or if they didn't need their jobs to live and to support themselves. I think that they would view it 
as an empowering force and something to be used as a tool. But because the tool is being used to replace them in something that they need to live, now they're upset about it, which makes sense. Capitalism bad, tool good. Oh, they would be doing this in a lot of places. I mean, uh, I, I think that like capitalism, I am a major capitalism enjoyer. I think capitalism is amazing and it has brought probably more positivity to people's lives than like any other like economic system in the history of time. It's incredible. Like capitalism has uplifted like massively like billions of people. Are there negative effects of it? Absolutely. <laughs> Duh. But I think that the positives massively outweigh the negatives. And I don't think that like you should you, like I don't agree that like all capitalism is all good. I don't think that all socialism is all good, but I don't think that all socialism is all bad either. And I don't think all capitalism is all bad either. I think it's a mix. I think you need to have a mix. Yeah, too much of anything is bad. Yeah, there it is. And also, like, again, I appreciate videos like this. Like, I, I don't I don't take, like, if somebody disagrees with me about a point that I had on the internet, like, what, when we got to take this personally, what the fuck? No, I'm not going to take this. It's not, what? It, it, it's like, it's just such a weird thing. It's like communism, it's good in practice, but it's badly executed in real life. Um, I think that you should go and look about, um, they don't exist. Uh, I, I know plenty of socialist millionaires. None of them create the business in the style of the government of business. Then they cry about the dream about they don't exist because they don't work. Uh, no, I think that like, really the truth is that people are prone to, um, people are prone to acting in self-interest. And I think that you should never expect people to not act in self-interest. So if you do that and you start trying to like, uh, you know, expect people, oh, I'm going to go and uh, get mad at this person for whatever reason for acting in self-interest, you, you're just, you're denying human reality. And so that's the reason why regulation is the enemy of capitalism, which is sad. I, I think that that's not true uh, because the first thing that you do so, like, anybody who's actually been in a truly free market in, like, video games, right, um, knows that the first thing that you do in a free market is to make it not free. Like, you start price fixing, you start hoarding the market, you start hoarding resources, you start putting competitors out of business, you start trying to pay them to not price the same, or to price the same as you, you start exploiting and cheating immediately. Like, you immediately start cheating. And so, no, no, so, like, here's an example, right? And so, the first thing that you go and do is you start, like, for example, like, whenever we would sell carries... Any time that a new guild would kill a boss that's like a, a mount drop boss, I would tell them, like, listen, bro, like, we sell for 200 We want you to sell for 200 so everybody makes more money. And, like, in Classic WoW, I price fixed with all of the other guys that had the Lionheart helm, and we charged 100 gold for a craft for the majority of vanilla WoW because we had control over the production. So immediately, a free market self-corrects to being a unfree market. The idea of a free market is a fantasy. And the closest thing that you can have to a free market is maintained by regulation. Now, the problem is also that regulation can offer a way for large corporations to suppress smaller corporations by bogging them down with like a lot of uh, uh, like a quality controls or something like that. And they're like, oh, well, we have to have more quality controls so it's harder for other people to get into the business. Like, there are tons of different ways you can scam people. Like, I'm telling you, like, I remember I've I've learned so many things on, like, how to fucking scam people, how to, like, break systems like this just by playing games. Because video games are an actual free economy. You can actually do whatever the fuck you want. And that's the exact thing that small happens with small vape companies. Yeah. And so, yeah, Angoro Dinosaur Mafia. And I think so. So that's really the truth. Does WoW make people bad? No. Uh, I'll link you guys' video one more time, and then I'll talk about the rest of it. You see President of Argentina's speech at Warlock Amok Forum? I saw a couple uh, threads of it, but I didn't see a whole lot else besides that. Uh, what's the benefit of this particular topic? 
Um, I, I think that like my point is that I don't think that you can blame capitalism for something like this. And I don't think that you can blame any one thing for something like this, because I think that this is a manifestation of human greed and human, human greed will manifest itself in communism, socialism, capitalism, totalitarianism, anything, because people want more. That's the only thing that they want. They always want more of what they don't have or what they do have already. If people want to have a million dollars, they want two million dollars. If they have a billion dollars, they want two billion dollars. That's the way most people think. Take this critical review like a champ. I, I take almost all critical review like a champ. The only critical review that I don't take like a champ is uh, not critical. It's just an insult. 